How about that cigar? How about that cigar? Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching and listening to episode 112 of How About That Cigar Live. And we would like to tell you about your car's extended warranty. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to reach you. We've for been some trying time. to reach you for some time now. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, guys, for watching episode 112 and for listening on the audio podcast. As always, we are live from the Palacious Drew Estate mm -hmm. Cigar Studios. And once again, let's talk about the re-release of the beautiful limited edition Lanceros for 2021, exclusive for Drew Diplomat program participants. The limited edition Herrera Esteli Lanceros will debut very, very soon. The 7 by 38 Lancero requires expert hands to perfectly arrange the individual tobacco components, assuring the cigar's complexity and ideal draw. The Herrera Esteli Habano Lancero is made using a flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, Honduran Habano binder, and Nicaraguan filler tobaccos, while the Herrera Esteli Connecticut Broadleaf Lancero is composed of an exceptional high priming of Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper that Drew Estate reserves throughout the year exclusively for this cigar, a bold Brazilian Matafina binder, and rich Nicaraguan filler tobaccos. For more info, please visit DrewEstate.com. As always, thank you guys so much for being with us here on How About That Cigar Live. We have a very special episode coming up tonight. It's going to be a hoot. It's going to be an absolute hoot. The first of many, we hope. But uh, as always, before we get into the main segment of the show, we got you know a couple things we got to get out of the way. I mean, hey, John, what's up? Um, thanks for joining us, John. Um, so... As we speak, our Minnesota Twins are playing the Baltimore Orioles, mm -hmm. the two worst teams in baseball, mm -hmm. in all of not just division, all of Major League Baseball. So the ratings for this one, I'm sure. are. Yeah, I'm sure that this is breaking records mm -hmm. for low ratings. Mm -hmm. um, twins were supposed to be at the top of the heap, and we are, <laughs> I think we're tied for last place in, in Major League Baseball with Baltimore. What are you going to do? So they're playing as we speak. Um, the but are playing. the Wild are playing in about an hour. Yep. Puck drops in about an hour on game yep. five. Yep. And uh, it's for, for the Wild, it's win or go home. So whoever wins between in this series uh, between Las Vegas and Minnesota goes to play the Colorado Avalanche. Mm -hmm. And uh, they swept St. Louis, which I was very surprised by. I mean, Colorado is a very good team. Yep. But I did not expect a sweep. Correct. So that was, uh, but Colorado's playing incredible hockey right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and the goalie for Las Vegas is, <laughs> I mean, uh, Flurry is absolutely killing us. Yep. Plus the, the rest of the, uh, the rest of the team for Vegas figured out a strategy to take Kaprizov out of the game. Totally took him yeah. out. And I mean, their power play, Ability, their, yeah, they're on both sides. Their penalty kill is like no, I think number one in the league, and our our actually our power play was close was to number very one. high. Uh, but their penalty kill is outrageous. So, you know, it's fun to watch hockey right now. That's enough out of you, Kevin. That's enough out of you. No, uh, it's it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, it would be awesome to see uh, Minnesota make a series out of it. You know, and. You know, it. I would just love to see more hockey out of them. So hopefully, it's win or go home. So hopefully, Minnesota plays with that kind of urgency tonight without getting panicked. Um, we'll see how it goes. You know, but it's uh, it, it's been an interesting series and fun to watch. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, this this week we were kind of trying to figure out what to do for a show. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's those times when you don't have a guest that you think, okay, let's come up with something different. And so let's, let's kind of work our way into the special segment of the show. Uh, and let me pull up, make sure I get all of our branding stuff good to go here. So, and our, not that we didn't have like, you know, a huge line of people. You know, our agent was saying, you know, Michael Jordan wants to yeah. come on. And, yeah, Michael you know, Jordan wanted to come on. And um, Nick Jonas, I mean. And, Betty and White. Betty White. Um, Abe Vigoda. Mm -hmm. um, John yeah. Wayne. Yeah. Uh, Caesar Augustus. Mm. I mean, you know, the, the list, list is. It, yeah. 
yeah <sighs> genghis khan so this was just us taking a break <laughs> from that life yeah um and uh no but you know we love to do we love to do this stuff um having having fun um just the two of us we get to shake yeah. things up a little bit and go outside of the box and we like it yeah so let's uh get into our main segment of the week and as always guys you know that our main segment is brought to you by corona cigar company and corona cigar.com the internet's largest and easiest to use virtual cigar store corona cigar company offers you the finest handmade cigars humidors and cigar accessories at the absolute lowest possible price you'll also find unique and limited cigars containing florida sun-grown tobacco as a proud american President and founder of Corona Cigar Company, Jeff Borshowitz, believed it was possible to bring cigar tobacco farming back to Florida. At Corona Cigar Company and CoronaCigar.com, you'll find the best selection anywhere in the world of cigars containing this special Florida sun-grown tobacco. If you live in Florida or are just visiting, be sure to visit any of the great Corona Cigar locations in downtown Orlando, Sand Lake, Lake Mary, and also the Davidoff of Geneva Lounge in Tampa. For more info on all of that, please visit coronacigar.com and floridasungrown.com. So, ladies and gentlemen, episode 112 of How About That Cigar Live. So, there, there have been a million cigar shows on social media, YouTube, Facebook, that talk about pairings. And we knew that we were no different. That's, that's one of the fun things to talk about, you know, with all different kinds of beverages and things like that. We've, we've talked to a lot of people about it because yep. it's fun to explore what to, you know, what, what to drink or, or even some, mm -hmm. in some cases, eat with your cigars. And when you talk about doing a pairing show, because there are so many uh, cigar shows that have done really well with that and do a great job at talking about pairings, we didn't want to just... You know, we don't want to try to copy what they do. We want to try to do something different, but still talk about the mm -hmm. interesting world of pairing stuff. So I came up with a concept that as far as I know is, you know, it's fun. I did a lot of searching around. As far as I know, it's pretty new for the for the cigar world. So mm -hmm. welcome to the first ever pairing roulette. Yeah, we should have a song for that. We should, we have, should have a song. A little, like, uh, yeah, yeah. My, my, yeah. I had the time to do the graphics, but not the song. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll work, work on, on that. that. Yeah. So it is the first ever pairing roulette. So here's what's going to happen. And this is the cool part about pairing roulette is we can change it up and do it differently every time. And we can always add things and change things. But tonight, what we're going to do, mm -hmm. just because it's the first time out of the gate with pairing roulette, we are going to try where we have. We're going to each each Garrett and myself are going to spin the roulette wheel and we spin once to decide what our beverage is going to be. And then we spin a second time with a different wheel to decide which wrapper leaf type of cigar we're going to have. And again, the concept is fun because in the future we can do different cigar brands. We can do different cigar Vitolas. We can do. Um, different cigar countries, you know, yeah. Nicaraguan or Dominican or Honduran, things like that, Cuban even. Mm -hmm. um, left-handed so, versus right-handed yeah, left cigars. Left-handed cigars because it's real. I don't know about where you guys live. It is really hard to find left-handed cigars. It really cigars. is. They're, you yeah. Know, uh, I mean, that minority, they're hurting. Yeah, yeah, really. So Shout out to the Southpaws. So, <laughs> so, so tonight, uh, you know, the first time out of the gate with uh, pairing roulette, we said we're going to keep it simple. So, um, as you guys know, um, Garrett is, so talk a little bit, bit about you and, and yeah, drinking. so I have been sober for 26 years on my 17th birthday. I had finally had enough. I was, uh, I was young and, uh, but you know, several overdoses and very open about my recovery and, and all of that. So, and obviously have a lot of friends who do drink and it's nothing that, um, affects me, but, uh, I don't drink anymore. So I live vicariously through Matt and others. I have my teas, my coffees, my other things. And yeah, it's, it's what it is. So let me share this with you guys. And, and, you know, this is, this is nothing, you know, outside of the box fancy it's, you know, it's, it's PowerPoint, you know, let's be honest about this. So this is the wheel. We have we have one wheel for our beverages. So we have uh, we have water, 
-hmm. on the non-alcoholic side, we have water and that could be waters of any variety. It could be just plain still water. It can be bubbly water. It could be flavored water, but these are water beverages. Then we have juices, then we have coffees, and then we have teas. Mm -hmm. On the alcoholic side, we have beers, bourbons, rums and scotches and we have a selection here uh, each of us have our own selection of, of beverages that fit our beverage type and then on the cigar wrapper side we have the other wheel so we have habano wrappers we have corojo wrappers we have broadleaf wrappers sumatra wrappers and finally connecticut's shade wrappers so we are going to start out here and we're going to start with garrett and of course if Garrett uh, spins an alcoholic beverage, Garrett's going to spin again. I guess 26 years. Oh, okay. <laughs> 20, 26 years out the window. So, uh, Garrett, go ahead and what just hit, hit that arrow button. Hit the arrow button. All right, here we go. And wait for it. And for now it. hit the arrow button again. Oh, okay. Water. Water. All right. So, I was thirsty. Good. So good. I was waiting. So now that you know okay. what your beverage is going to be, now spin the wheel again. And you're going to choose which wrapper leaf? Habano. All right. So right out of the gate. I am going to do. That is not. No, that's a broad leaf. This uh, one is. This one is. Yes. Yep. So let me get us back on screen so everybody can see our beautiful faces again. Well, beautiful. Hi. Uh, so, so Garrett has the Kintsugi from Alec and Bradley. And he has, what is this uh, water type beverage oh, yeah. you have here? So um, I am doing LaCroix and it is the, it's the lemon Ooh, one. Limoncello. Yeah, limoncello. And this, this, so from LaCroix or La Croix. La Croix. So they have the, the, the regular lemon flavored is fine. Yep. But the limoncello and the key lime pie. Oh yeah. Are out of this world. So if you find those varieties of La Croix. Le and, and I'll get into a little bit of what I like about this beverage after Matt gets his. So I'm going to spin the wheel here myself and uh, pick out my lovely pairing for this evening. So let's get that going right now. Oh, no. Oh, let's. Oh. Well, all right. I'll pick my cigar first. Habano, la. Do we want to do the same? No, let's not. no. Let's not do. Let's not do the same. Let's uh. Let's try that again. Oh, yeah. Let's go here. Beverage. So my beverage pairing will be. Round and round and round she goes. Where she stops, nobody. Beer. That will be my pairing. So I I have I was drinking a little something before the show, but I have something that I'm gonna have with the show so my cigar wrapper leaf is going to be round and round and round she goes where she stops nobody habano well that's all right yeah i, I guess we'll do double that. up on habano yeah right it was on. meant to be it was meant to be stop speaking bad french i'm i don't know how to speak french i, I barely know, know how, how to speak <laughs> i barely know how to speak english. english you're asking a lot you are asking so much all right so Dude, I'm I'm excited. So this is only so this is the last Kintsugi I have. Is it the last one? It is. I have one, two left, I think, because I have it on the review schedule. So I had to save a couple. Um, cutter, lighter. So while we are uh, getting our cigars cut and lit, you guys let us know what you are joining us with. Let us know what you're smoking. Let us know what you're drinking. Um. Okay, while you're doing that, I'm going to talk about this La Croix. The the so the like Matt said, the lemon uh, natural lemon is is good. Uh, the limoncello is, I think they oh yeah, it's called it's naturally essenced. Naturally essenced. It's naturally essenced, and I love my essence <laughs> to be natural. <laughs> I don't like the unnatural essencing. Um, and the cool thing about doing citruses while smoking is it helps to clean the palate. It neutralizes some of that. And so I'm a big fan of, of drinking water and teas that um, have a higher acid content or citrus content that helps to cleanse while you smoke. So this 
for me is a non pairing. I'm not really pairing this with the cigar. This is meant to totally just continue to cleanse and, um, you're and doing a cleanse. I am. It's important to do a cleanse. It is. All right. So real quick here, guys, just because I want to mix things up. This is pairing roulette after all. I want to mix things up. So oh, you are? I'm going to choose a different wrapper leaf. <laughs> Hopefully it will not stop on the same the same spot again. We'll let it spin for how long should we go? Like 20 minutes? I don't know. Spin. Yeah. yeah it's... Okay. Connecticut shade. All right. Connecticut shade. Do you have with, Connecticut? Otherwise, with I got beer. this. Right I do have Connecticut shade. Um, yes, I do. Mm. So let's uh, get rid of that guy. So I see that, Chuck, you made a good recommendation, Cameroon. That definitely, and that's the cool part about pairing roulette is we can yeah. always keep adding and changing things. And, There's so many that we could have, you know, so... Uh, by doing five, it allows us to do five totally different ones next time. Yeah. I mean, there's San Andreas, Dominican, Cameroon. Um, uh, Criollo, Criollo, Corojo. Um, I mean, you've got horny goat weed. Horny, go <laughs> horny goat weed, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I think, only grown on the eastern slopes of Mount Cacalapupu mm -hmm. in in uh, in Portugal. Yep, it's pretty solid. I just made that up. Um, this is an unbanded, but trust me on this. This is a Nat Sherman Sterling Super Lancero, uh, Connecticut Shade wrapper. Lovely, big Lancero, eight eight by thirty eight. So when uh, when I go to pair a cigar with a beverage, I like to either decide if I want the cigar to sing, if I want the pair to be a duet, or if I want to pour a bunch of tartar sauce on the nasty fish type situation where I know I have to smoke a cigar that either somebody's gifted me or whatever, then I will pick a, a stronger stronger beverage um some people you know like to do uh cokes and root beers and uh things like that your minnesota is showing when you said root beer root <laughs> root 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 did i really say root <laughs> no you said root oh, okay. that's root. the minnesota root? yeah for 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 me when i moved up to wisconsin and minnesota and i heard people say root or roof yeah i said what are you talking what is that i don't know what that means really yeah so that's a, I didn't. Most of the rest of the country says roof or root. Okay, root beer. So no, it's all good. It's hey, you're from Minnesota. Yeah, you do you, bro. Or even Dr Pepper. And yeah, I'm not you know, and I'm not it. For me, I can't do especially if the cigar has natural sweetness to it. That I want to taste that sweetness from the cigar. I'll avoid those with you know, like the plague. And I'm sure the same is true with you know some bourbons and whiskeys and and other spirited varietals that are very sweet in nature you know they can really hide the sweetness and flavors of the cigar so um i'll be honest this is perfect i want this cigar to sing i really do um i would have rather not paired this with coffee or my tea because it would have it would have really taken away from what this cigar can be and that's that's one of the fun parts about pairing roulette is you know we could end up sometimes honestly as we go through this you know we can do dozens or hundreds of different types of pairing roulettes and we could end up coming up with combinations that just don't work yeah that's okay if they don't work we're like you know what i'm spinning the wheel again yeah i'm gonna go again you know and i'll probably get three quarters of the way through this one and i'll spin again and uh try a totally different pairing if if we go that long so switches for the uh, for the pairing that I that I spun on the wheel, so I got the Connecticut Shade, so I've got the Nat Sherman Sterling Super Lancero with Connecticut Shade wrapper, which is um, really mild on the body spectrum, but on the flavor spectrum, there's a lot going on. Yeah, you know, and there is nat like Garrett was saying, this this the mm -hmm. cigar has natural kind of sweetness, and even through, I'm gonna retrohale here, 
Paris. You can see when the smoke comes out of the nose, there's a mild sort of sweet, grassy aroma, you know, like um, picture yourself walking through a farm field, you know, where they just where they just uh, cut cut straw or hay. Mm-hmm. It's that that aroma kind of in the air and w- along with some sweetness. And, you know, there's definitely some well aged tobaccos in there, which you can really, you know, get the flavors and aroma of. So the pairing for for beer just because tonight being the first ever pairing roulette, I wanted to keep it simple. So this is from Kona Brewing Company, and it's called Longboard Island Lager. And it's just a simple, smooth, American-style lager. Uh, that, and, and again, I, for the first one, I wanted to keep it simple. A beer that is kind of understated, but can pair well with just about anything. Longboard, mm, that's that's really interesting. Longboard lager. That's uh, that's my nickname in college. <laughs> college was that an all girls college? Never mind. Never mind. Mm-hmm. It used to be an all girls college. Yeah. The uh... <laughs> now it's co-ed. <laughs> I gotta. You know where the weight room is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So Chuck, you know, a Connie with a Highland Scotch. Uh, let us know what some of your favorite pairings are. Yeah, with a with a Highland Scotch, I totally agree. I absolutely so f- for scotches, and I'm I'm knowledgeable enough about Scotch to know the basics. I'm not really deep into it like like Chuck is and like some other people are. But when it gets when it gets too far on the on the earthy and the peaty kind of scotches, um, like Lagavulin then i i agree that it kind of it's it's just like a a like a really deep espresso with a connecticut shade really mild cigar the cigar it they still pair beautifully together because it's it, it's an experience thing but you do tend to when you got really strong coffee mm-hmm. you do tend to um, especially if the coffee has a lot of bitter notes to it, mm-hmm. you can lose some of that Connecticut oh, sure. shade, mild sweetness. And that's why I love a medium roast. Yeah. Uh, coffee, um, you know, espressos and dark roast, they can be good with certain cigars. But um, again, this is about pairing. It's about either creating, you know, you're singing the cigar, you're creating a beautiful duet between the two. Yeah. Or you're masking. Yeah. And so this is a bottle, actually, and I have the stuff out here that I, you know, depending on what would have come up on the, on my spin of the wheel, it, I had it here in case this was going to come up. This is a bottle that Garrett actually gifted me. And it's one I had never tried, nor had I ever even heard of. So Glenn Kinchy Scotch. This is Glenn Kinchy 12-year-old. And this is actually Edinburgh Scotch, which... I'll be honest, I only really knew Highland and Lowland Scotch. I didn't know about Edinburgh Scotch. And when he gifted me this bottle, I actually had to look it up. But I found so many great reviews of this scotch, especially for new scotch drinkers, people who say that they don't like scotch. It has a very mild flavor profile. It's really bright. And it actually reminds me a lot of some Japanese whiskeys. Um, it's mild, bright, it's got a notes of like what you'd typically, uh, what you typically sense as like citrusy kind of notes and things like that. Um, with a little bit of like maybe cedar wood and, and it's not really oaky or peaty. Mm-hmm. So this is a really good scotch for people who say that, pardon me, people who say that they don't like scotch. This is a, this is a good one to start out with. Um, so I've really been enjoying this bottle and what's, what's one of the, so you have the flavored water and the Habano. What was, what were some of the other wrapper or some of the other beverage choices? So we've got just a regular cup of medium roast coffee and and that is totally black. And that is the, um, you didn't know it, but I know what we have in our, um, in our coffee mill right now. This is Starbucks, 
Uh, it's just their, the, the the garden variety Starbucks uh, Pike Place roast. Oh, cool. So it's commonly, if you go into a Starbucks and just ask for a flavor, you know, a roast of the day, that's typically what you get. And then, so if you don't know about, um, you know, the tea keepers, um, our buddy John Strange, uh, he does tea. He's also in has a tea uh, distribution and store and everything. This has been my favorite tea for a long time. And when I found out that he had it, I went nuts. Lapsang Sushong is, you guys, uh, for pairing with cigars. <laughs> and I have, I have never tried it. So I, I do want to try it. Yeah. But just smelling it because because i'm not really a big tea guy but when you when you smell these these tea leaves in here it's and it, it honestly looks like um I, and I really can't show it on camera but it when you look in here if you guys are familiar with pipe tobacco this looks like a deep almost black cavendish yeah. tobacco and it smells it's it's really got this this uh charred oak barrel uh hickory kind of smell to it but it's also um yeah it's it's also almost like if you know what molasses smells like a little bit it sort mm. of smells like what what i would think molasses smells like so kind of smoky molasses it's yeah. really got a great smell to it and it was actually it was one of the things that hooked me on the show the mentalist if anybody watched the mentalist uh the the main character of of that show uh uh patrick jane always made tea in just about every episode and if it was a choice he always had lapsang sushong oh this is a really good one kevin's saying iced tea with lemon and cameroon wrapper is fire i have to mm. try that so kevin i gotta ask you do you because I am not a Southerner, so I actually don't like sweet tea, and I know I'm going to catch a lot of heat for that. So, Kevin, are you talking unsweetened brewed iced tea with lemon, or are you talking Southern sweet tea? Um, John is saying Turbo Jet Breakfast Blend with the McAuliffe, Connecticut. That I have to put on my list. Uh, triple Latte no with Connecticut. Tea. Oh yeah. No yeah. sweet tea. Okay, yeah. So you're Regular you and I tea. are in the same boat. Yeah. I I've just I I've I've just never liked sweet tea. I grew up my mom would brew sun tea, you know, on the yep. back porch and yep. we just didn't put sugar in it. That's that's the way I grew up. So yeah. uh sweet tea I actually find way too I went to Atlanta way too sweet. And I'm pretty sure I had diabetes for like three days. Yeah. <laughs> I had because I wanted to do like um, it was the first time I really had an opportunity to go out, do some real, like get real Southern grits, got the collard greens, got, you know, um, I did some, you know, pig's feet. I did, you know, some real Southern things and I wanted to try for real sweet tea. Holy balls. Yeah. It hurts for me. It hurts my teeth. It is so sweet. Um, and people, those of you who love sweet tea. Go yeah. for, all day long. Yeah. Go for it. I'm not I, judging you. Yeah, it's just not my. It doesn't mm -mm. doesn't work for me. It's not it's my cup of sweet. tea. Um, and here's the. <laughs> Good night, folks. We'll see you later. We'll see you later. Don't unfriend me. No. Um, this is one of the weird things, though. Is I am actually, you know, you can tell by my waistline, ever expanding as it is, that I love sugar. I mean, I am a sugar holic. I actually, I would say. You know, for, for me, my thing, if, if I'm going to go into recovery for something, it's going to be for sugar. And mm -hmm. I don't, I, I mean that literally it's, it's like I, but there are some things when they're too sweet, I can't stand them. Yeah. And iced tea is one of those things. Root beer for me. I'm not a big, I don't really like it. Oh, I love unless, it. unless it's poured over ice cream. <laughs> and then of yeah. course that's you know. super sweet, but just the drink itself. I'm not. Yeah, so I think for me, my favorite root beer is, um, uh, oh my gosh, why am I bringing Nineteen nineteen? No, that's like number four for me because it's so sweet. They sell it in cans now. They do. Yeah, I don't think. I got a little disappointed. 
Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, cream soda, Chuck, same thing. Uh, oh, it's called... Uh, <sighs> starts with a W. Whoa, whoa. Why, why am I... Whoa, 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 whoa. Why, it's like a German name. W- Wunderschlager? Yep, that's it. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, the best mass-produced root beer, in my opinion, Sprecher. That is a really good root beer. It's not too sweet. And um, yeah, it's just good stuff. I agree about the cream soda. Um, Cream soda, I do like because there's, there are some brands that aren't as sweet of cream soda, but usually they're usually you're having to go to like the, the small companies that make just little Mm -hmm. small batches of, of cream soda. Wine hearts. Uh, it's called wine hearts. Wine hearts. There you go. Um, so if uh, if the wheel would have landed for me on rum, it was going to be one of my go to rums, uh, Florida Kanye Twelve. Um, Chad, you got it. Henry Weinhardt. There you yeah, go. Yeah, the delay. I think I beat you, but it is Henry Weinhardt. And if the wheel for me would have landed on bourbon. Uh, I have a number of bourbons in the house, but I was going to go with four roses single barrel because it's just, I'm just going to smell, just get a little, get a little whiff. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. just, it's just, it's got butterscotchy. Mm-hmm. It is very butterscotchy. Yeah. There's something about four roses single barrel that has such a, such an intense butterscotch note to it. The only, so, okay, I was 17 when I quit drinking and the, I'm pretty sure the best alcohol I had in 1995 was, um, if anybody remembers the movie Swingers, do you remember Swingers? Great movie. <laughs> and uh, John Favreau is in the casino and, you know, drink lady comes <laughs> around and yeah, and he's like, uh, Glenn Levitt, Glenn, any Glenn will do. Yeah. Glenn, Glenn Livett, Glenn Fittick, any, Glenn, any Glenn, any, any Glenn. Glenn. And so after that, I was like, I got to get, I got to get some Glenn Levitt. And so, um, we had Glenn Levitt and I, I'm pretty sure I wasted like a $30 glass of booze at that time. I was 16 and yeah, who, you, you know, thought you were a baller. You're I 16. Did. You're like, you get a glass of fancy scotch and. And you probably just shot it. I did. You? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. no, no, no. I didn't shoot it. Okay. I tried to drink it. Um, but, you know, here's, you know, the, the mindset between somebody who can appreciate something. And this could be age. It could be addiction. It could be a lot of factors. I was not in a place to really appreciate a lot of that. You know, and the same as with cigars, you guys. If you If you're finding yourself going outside to hammer down a cigar, you might want to think about it because these are not meant if, to be hammered down. If that's all you're doing. Right. If that's like, all you're yeah, doing. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to get on anybody's case. No. But, yeah. Um, these should be enjoyed at the speed in which they like to be smoked. Yeah. And, um, you know, the environment has a lot to do with how you enjoy a cigar. It really does. And one of the things, so... Chuck is saying everything pairs with four roses. That is that is true. I'll there are some I would say there are some beverages, especially s- distilled spirits, barrel-aged distilled spirits, because they're so intense, you could just about pair anything with them and it'll work. And there are some um there's some other beverages that are so intense. I mean, I know that there are some chais mm. and, and, um, um, then there's also this, this, uh, we're not having a connection issue. If we're having a connection issue, just bear with us. Um, there are some, uh, and we're still on this other, the, uh, what's the, the green beverage matcha. Oh, yeah. I don't know the first thing about matcha. So if anybody knows, please train me and teach me about matcha because I don't know the first thing about it. So have you had it? I have. What is it? So what is like if you had to compare it to something, what does it taste like? Well, you can't, it's like saying what does what does uh, tea taste like? OK, so it's its own thing. There's altogether. there's many different recipes. There's different fermenting 
things. Okay. So it's a fermented drink. Okay. And there's a, in like, um, you know how some people have like these, these friendship bread um, bags oh, yeah, that, yeah. that they'll do with, you know, the, the starter breads and stuff. People do that with matcha as well. You know, so there's, there's many varieties of matcha. Um, I had it once and uh, I didn't leave the bathroom for Ooh, okay. a long time. So I just knew that it didn't agree with me. Maybe it was, and it wasn't, that wasn't a homebrew one. It was a, it was a store-bought one. Yeah. Um, so. And then, and sometimes the body, the digestive system will react to fermented things. Right. It could be, it just depends on the way your body reacts to it. Yep. And it, like you said, it could have been a bad one. It could have just been your body getting used to it. Yeah. But it is definitely on my list of things to try. I'm not going to lie. It scares me because drinking anything that's that green just seems. Well, especially like if you and, ever and watch like how like somebody prepares it. So, yeah, um, there's a there's a top. I don't even want to call it a film, but it's like a film. But the film can sometimes look like this wax cake that yeah. they have to peel back. Yeah. You know, because of the, you know, fermentation. But yeah. sometimes that looks freaking gross. Yeah. I've seen it made on YouTube and things like that. And it it scares me a little. But I want to try it just to. It's because super healthy. The fact is, I may try it and love it. And it's my new jam. But right. until I actually, it's it's just like that first time, you know, you know, taking that bungee jump mm -hmm. you know this mm -hmm. uh, the second third and 12th time are easy right but it's that first time yeah you know it's 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 even just like walking into a premium cigar shop for the first time saying okay i'm gonna try one of these cigars and it's that first time you go in there you know it's like i have no idea what to expect i'm a little scared you know i, I have no idea what i'm doing but i'm gonna try it um and, and the same thing was true for me with some distilled spirits you know because when you're younger, for me, when I was younger, it was just the cheapest thing. Whatever they had in the rail, you know, whatever the the the, the bottom rail was at the at the bar was what I could afford as a college student. Um, who, you know, at the time I thought Bud Light was, you know, crap here. Um, is it in a plastic bottle? In a, yeah, I'm in. yeah. The, if is that vodka or is oh is that Scotch <laughs> spelled with a K? S K O C H. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll have I'll have some of that. My first scotch experience was horrible because it was at a bar and somebody just gave it to me. It was in a plastic cup, probably poured out of a plastic bottle. Made um, in Idaho. Uh, yeah, made in Idaho or Alabama or something. I didn't try scotch again for over 20 years. Um, and then I had to ease my way back into it. Um, so it's just trying those new things. Um, like Candela wrap cigars. That's something mm -hmm. we got to put on the on the uh the absolutely old, the roulette wheel is candela because that could really imagine so imagine this matcha and a candela that might you gotta have a clear path to the bathroom is all i'm saying well and it could be that the matcha just got in my stomach and was like oh my gosh we got a <laughs> lot of work to do guys this dude is screwed up and it could have been a healthy outing you know uh but so right before next time we do pairing roulette we should have matcha on the drink wheel and we should have candela on the cigar wheel i'm game and we should each eat a sack of white castle before the show oh absolutely <laughs> absolutely i will bring the depends stay tuned stay tuned because this could set youtube and okay and then Facebook also history then we also need to have fireball on oh. the wheel for you. Oh no, no fireball. I don't like fireball. I love cinnamon and I love whiskey, but fireball is horrible. Uh, there are some, there are some very good cinnamon whiskeys out there. Fireball. is not one of them. No fireball is, mm. is like cinnamon. It, it's like lighter fluid with the, the slightest essence of, of like candy store cinnamon. Hmm. It's, Blech. it's awful um somebody once described it as a cinnamon mike and ike with um turpentine i would say that's about right that's about right i have i have only tried 
fireball neat twice. And I should have learned my lesson the first time because it was so, so bad. And, you know, I, I tried to like it. I really tried to like it, but you know, we should do that show. Like we, uh, we split a crave case. Uh, (laughs) we have, uh, we have coffee and matcha and the first person who has to dip out of the studio loses. (laughs) And like, uh, LFD digger, <laughs> <laughs> some intensely strong cigar like an LFD digger or, or a, a, a tatuaje pork tenderloin or something. Or you that know. new one by Stallone. Oh yes, yeah the the quadruple lajero whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Seven, seven. Sorry, seven lajeros. Seven lajeros. Yeah, that's you guys keep your eyes open for that. We're gonna have more news coming about this. That might this. be a good uh, April first. Yeah. Show next year. <laughs> Um, the, one of the things that, that I have learned a lot about, um, my own palate, especially this was interesting after COVID after you, cause you and I were both pretty sick with COVID Mm -hmm. at different times. But when I had that, that sort of sick period afterwards for six weeks or eight weeks where I couldn't taste anything at all, Mm -hmm. um, that was really frustrating for me. And it was cool when kind of the lights started to slowly come back on in my palate afterwards, because it's, it happened incrementally, you know, where it got 10% better and then 20% better. And it was interesting because as I started feeling better, you know, there were, there was a long period of time where I was like, I don't want to touch any alcohol because it just made me feel horrible. Mm -hmm. So then gradually I, you know, I'd have, I'd have a little bit of gin because gin is actually naturally sort of settling to the stomach and it settles the system a little bit because of the botanicals in there. So I'd start with a little bit of gin and then, um, you know, move into like the milder scotches and some of the milder bourbons and, and rums that are on the sweeter side and also start with cigars that were really on the mild spectrum. This Nat Sherman Sterling is one of those examples Um, you know, those like Monte Cristo whites and Ashton classics and, um, uh, Fuente chateaus, Yeah, you know, that, that have really mild flavor profiles that have the, the, um, the natural sweetness that we've been talking about. And it was cool along the way to feel my palate kind of wake up. And each time after about a week or so, I would get more things, you know, happening, you know, like tasting the sweet and the bitter and the salty and all that, where it, it almost, you know, cause you start on with the flavor senses on the front of the tongue. And then as it goes around to the back of the palate, it kind of happened in that progression. And it was, it was kind of fun to experience, although don't ever get sick with COVID cause it absolutely blows. Well, and I did a, I did a thing on Saturday. I got my microchip. Oh, you got your microchip? I did get my microchip. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And it's just the one microchip. So Okay. I got the I got the J and J microchip. All right. So the so I mean there's no need for me to give out my address anymore. Right. Because the government knows where yeah, where I'm you sorry. are right now. I'm sorry. That's all right. I don't mind. Um I had a little fever and uh didn't feel very good on Sunday, but I'm fine today. It was good. Omar. So uh, I just What's looked up, up Omar. I just looked up the that green tea. I had never heard of that before. And it's Spaz, is that what it's steez. called? Steez. Oh, Steez. And it it looks really delicious. And it's affordable. Right on. So uh looks good. I may have to try that. Do they sell it anywhere locally? Um, I agree. So Omar says Dunn Brothers Nitro is amazing with cigars. I agree. Oh. Although I haven't tried Dunn Brothers Nitro. Um, the nitro from, um, uh, blackout coffee uh, oh, really? in, in Minneapolis, Yeah, blackout coffee in Minneapolis, their nitro with cigars. Uh, I had a, it was one of the, my father's, I think it was the, uh, Le Bijou mm, nice. with some night with some nitro from uh, blackout coffee. Incredible because that nitro that little sort of, it gives it that sort of creamy, um, not fizzy, but 
sort of livens up the yeah it really yeah. does nitros if you guys have never tried a nitro uh try it it's yeah. it's a totally different experience I, I love i love the nitros it's fun so omar says cub has those yeah those teas so we gotta try that absolutely um so let's uh i'm trying to look at what time it is here no we're good yeah we're, we're good we're good so this time. beer um just to check in kind of on on flavors and the way the pairing's going this beer because like i said it's a really mild american style lager um the cigar is winning as far as in the pairing you know the duet yeah it's it's balanced but definitely this it's more it's like 60 40 the cigar sure. is you know the cigar is getting 60 percent of my palate and the beer is getting 40 percent. but it is because it's so humid and muggy and hot today i mean for minnesota you know for those of you who live in florida or or texas it's nothing but for us today it was pushing 90 degrees yeah and really the humidity is starting to go like this if you don't know minnesota is basically a big swamp so it gets crazy humid around here but now we're going to go into another roller coaster we are for the next week we're going to have highs in the mid to high 50s yeah so I mean, that's Daniel brings out a really good point. I want a good ginger beer to pair with something, but it kills anything you're smoking because good ginger beer yeah. is strong ginger beer. It is. Yeah. Especially if it's quality, because right. if it's made with, with fresh ginger and it, there's chunks and shit in it. Yeah. That's what I want. Cause if you've had really good, high quality, um, Asian foods that mm -hmm. have, that that actually use real ginger yep it's it stays on the palate yeah. and it's a very it's it's because i may be oh i may be wrong about this i think it's in the same type of family of plant as horseradish correct so it's it's it has a brightness that that almost sort of coats and not like capsaicin but right it, it, it's more about it activates your sinus yeah more than your palate more than your palate yeah um, but yeah, ginger beer, uh, I typically have ginger beer for myself in cocktails, like mule type cocktails where you've got your, your liquor of choice and then lime juice and ginger beer. So the most popular of course, being the, Moscow. uh, the Moscow mule, which is vodka, lime juice and ginger beer. Um, and that people call them different things. Basically, I just put a different location on the name mule so kentucky mule is bourbon and mexican mule is tequila and so on and so forth. okay that's just my it just helps me keep it straight so i remember what's what for sort of japanese mule um you could use japanese whiskey yeah or even like a sake or sake you could use uh, although i'm not a fan of I, maybe i've just never had any good sake but i'm not a fan of any rice mm. whiskeys not that I've tried. No, not that I've tried. They have, uh, they have a, f a sweetness to them, but it's like a funky mm. sock drawer kind of, mm -hmm. I know that sounds weird, but no, like, I get it. You know, that sort of I like do. you, you open this old drawer, you know, that's got like grandpa's old socks in it. That's mm -hmm. sort of musty mothball, mothball kind of mm -hmm. that. I don't know. That's what I've gotten from sake. Maybe I have never had any good stuff. So if you guys know about sake, let me Yes, know. Chad, I do eat pieces of shit for breakfast. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> may go lay by the bay. Eat some <laughs> hay. I just may. What do you say? <laughs> you, eat, you eat pieces of shit for breakfast? No. No. All right. I uh, digress. So, uh, quick little uh, trip uh, TikTok. Adam Sandler put out a TikTok the other day, and he did he did the Happy Gilmore. The Happy Gilmore. Swing. He said, "I haven't son I haven't done this in years." Yeah, and he said after he hit the and he he said he hit it pretty well. Yeah, he could be full of shit, but he said he hit it pretty well. But it looked good. And then he walks up to the camera and he's like, "I'm coming for you, shooter." <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty hilarious. It was good. Um. I don't know what this means. The hot sizzler. The hot sizzler. I'm pretty sure that's an um, urban dictionary thing that I don't that might see. Is that like the Green Bay butter churn? I think so. So if you guys just, I'm not going to say anything else about it on the show. Just go to Urban Dictionary and look up Green Bay butter churn. 
That's all I'm saying. Now we're moving on. Um, oh, yeah. Meet, <laughs> meet, meet you at, at the Sizzler. Sizzler. Oh, yeah. Got it. Yes. Happy Gilmore. Yep. Um, so, yeah. So the the pairing with this uh, Nat, Sherman, Nat Sherman Sterling and the beer is very good. Um, and the, and this beer is actually Kona Brewing Company. They sell a variety pack and I buy them multiple times throughout the year because it's got a couple IPAs in it. It's got, um, it's got an American ale and it's got this American style lager. Uh, they're all very drinkable, very tasty, um, not super high ABV and inexpensive. Uh, and I think they have a good, good product. So we should do a, a uh, we should do a ghetto um a ghetto a ghetto ghetto roulette where there's like um uh so we get some mickey grenades we get some old e and a 40 um and we get some md 2020 MD or 2020 yep and then i'll do some like um i can do purple drink yeah i can do um uh fago fago <laughs> yes that was i i used to love that back in the day because we could get them for i think when i was a kid we could get the the plastic bottles of fago for a nickel a piece and an orange uh slushy oh yes and an orange slushy in yeah. a in a in a big gulp big gulps huh guys and for the cigars we'll have backwoods we'll do and backwoods black and milds and um, um grenadiers yeah, we'll do grenadiers or uh, um, uh, grape swishers. Ooh, I don't know if I can do that. Paired with the grape drink. That I, don't, would... I don't think I can do that. Saint, Especially St. Ives. Saint Ives. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. Kool yep. Gosh, there's so many things we can do with this. Dragon's oh. milk. Yes, John. Dragons. Have I tried dragon's milk? I yes. That is. So it's... Uh, uh, it's um, from uh don't tell me don't tell me the brewing company shoot i can't remember the name of the brewing company um dragon's milk it's a stout an imperial stout and at one point um asylum made a dragon's milk cigar that was made to pair with um with the dragon's milk stout and uh, it's a milk stout and it's uh, really like it's one of those beers that you could almost like stand a spoon up in. It's so dense and thick and oh, really? dark. You can't even like like pictured Guinness, but dark. Like it's dark, dark. Because um, when I picture and it's Guinness, really good, it's pretty damn dark. And they do they do pair well together. Actually, they did a good job blending that cigar to pair with the um, with the beer. And so for me, this LaCroix, every time I drink it, it really clears the palate. And yeah. this cigar just stands way out. And this is a medium cigar. And I get all of that medium. It's almost going to a full uh, because I have nothing else on my palate. And if you really want to appreciate just the entire flavor of a cigar, do something with some acid or citrus in it. And it really cleanses each each draw you take. It's yeah. fantastic. So Kevin says the the Blanton cigar is no bueno. I mm. haven't tried it, but I don't. I have no doubt that you're right. So we had the blind. Do you remember the one? <laughs> oh, do I remember? So the this one? was a show that Andrew was also on, and we did the blind cigar swap. And Garrett gave me a cigar, and I think, I. Uh, I think I took three puffs off the cigar and I had, and I threw it on the garage floor. I said, I can't keep going. And it turns out that it was the maker's mark yeah, it was infused the cigar <laughs> from Gurkha. Gurkha and no disrespect to maker's mark or to Gurkha. It was horrible. So it's just not for me. Um, there are some cigars, you know, that have, a little hint of barrel aged, mm -hmm. like the diesel whiskey row. Yes. And uh, some of the Camacho American barrel yep. aged or Nicaraguan barrel aged, um, the La Aurora barrel aged, and many more. Uh, even, I, I mean, Fuente Añejos. Yep. They're, you know, the, the aged in uh, cognac barrels. Yep. 
So there are many examples of that, but that just pulls in a, just a tiny hint of sort of that sweetness and right. woodiness from the barrel. It's not like the infused, like what it, it's like if, you know, the laboratory where they try to make artificial flavors. Correct. If, if one of those laboratories was to sit down and be given the task of creating a artificial flavor that tasted like whiskey, that's the grossness that I taste in cigars that are actually like whiskey soaked or whiskey infused. Yeah. And the King Louis is different. Um, that one is actually enjoyable to me. Isn't that like, well, according to their price line, isn't that supposed supposed to retail for twenty six thousand dollars per stick or something? No, 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 no. It's like, it's like nineteen bucks. Yeah. Oh, okay. There was they have one cigar though that they is it, stupid. It, it actually supposedly retails for something like nineteen thousand dollars per cigar or something. Not which happening. it's not going to happen. But I wasn't sure if that was the same. No. Okay. Nope. So you can, uh, yeah, you can pick them up. They're, it's a, uh, you know, um. It's like a dessert cigar every once in a while, um, kind of like a leather rose or, you know, something else that or the higher end acids. And Kevin says try orange juice. So mm -hmm. this is interesting. This is um, uh, Bear Duplissy and the guys from Cigar Federation do the, uh, a couple times a year. They do a sort of a blind pairing show. And there was an there was one time that. um. I actually was on a show with Trip from Cigar Federation uh, and Bear on on Bear's show, El Oso Fumar Takes. And because it was a booze show, it was just me, um, since Garrett doesn't drink. Mm -hmm. And Trip brought that up. He said, try orange juice with a cigar. And I told him that I would, and I still haven't. So Trip, I'm sorry. And Kevin, thank you for reminding me of that because I've he said that it is surprisingly good it pairing is. a cigar with orange juice. And it I've is. never tried it. It seems unnatural. Yeah. So that is on, I have to try that because again, he said it's great. So, and it's totally unexpectedly great. Yeah. So I have to remember that on my list of things to try. Well, let's pull up the wheels again. I'm ready yeah. for, I'm ready for round two. I know you're still going on your round one, but I'm, I'm ready. Well, for I can round always, two. I, I, yeah, we can, uh, we can spin the wheel again. Let's, uh, let me pull this up here and right. get it shared. All right. So I'm doing round two and let's see what I'm drinking. Come on. Oops. Oh, this. Yep. Come on, tea. Come on, tea. Juice. Uh, juice. Juice. I have orange juice Do in you? the house. I'm pretty sure. I can go in and get it. Well, I want to do a pairing one. Rojo. Um, yep. Yep. The My Father Fonseca. Okay. Let's, nice. Let's go back. To... So let's go back and we'll get you a different, uh, we'll get you a different beverage. Uh, let's go back and round and round and round she goes. Coffee. Boom. There you go. That's a beautiful That pairing. should be a great pairing actually because I've had that cigar many times with coffee. And since you already did your pairing on the cigar... <laughs> we'll uh so let me also choose a new pairing round and round she goes i'm gonna give this one a little time let it breathe um uh, going <laughs> no see i can't do the juice i like it the juice you like it the juice do you like it the juice i like it the juice you guys old enough to remember that you like it the spice i like it the spice I do this 12 times in a row and I get orange juice every time. I'm going to say scotch. Yeah. It's it's mostly. Well, uh, hmm. we'll say scotch. I'm going to say scotch just because I want it to say scotch. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, for my wrapper. Oh, that is dead center. Isn't is no, that more, more on, broadly? Is that more broadleaf? Yeah. Okay, scotch and broadleaf it is. Scotch and broadleaf it is. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Uh, yeah, we'll, we have to fine-tune the wheels a little bit, get them, uh, get them working just right. right um, the penguins. 
are an OT. Oh, nice. Second OT. Ooh. All right, Scotch. So, as mentioned already, this is the Glen Kinchy 12 year. Right there. Beautiful. And we'll do a nice little, just a little pour. Not too much. Now, coffee is is cool because it's a it's a dual threat. It has a lot of acid in it, um, so it it can yeah it can it can have a lot of acid that helps to not coat your mouth with uh, a flavor. But this one, we're gonna we're gonna see. I gotta get the gotta get the hole on the right side if you know what I mean. <laughs> hey oh. Still warm. It is. These cups yeah. are great. Yeah, and and that's one of the things. So for coffee, um, when guys who do uh, coffee tasting, they actually call it cupping. So <laughs> it's it's actually what it's called. Guys who taste coffees for a living, they call it cupping. Um, temperature is important because the yep. warmth, the the heat of the coffee. A lot of it is is through the nasal passages, just like cigars. So you want the steam coming off of the coffee to oh, carry the aromas. Nice. Is that a good pairing? Nice. Oh. So for those of you, and again, this I'm I'm on the journey learning distilled spirits. You know, along with everybody else, I'm no expert by any means, but with distilled spirits, um, Scotch, bourbon, rye, things like that, I've learned by from many online and others. Just a couple of drops of filtered water, clean spring water. Just a couple of drops. And what does that do? So everybody that I've heard talk about this is it opens up the the beverage. It opens up the, the distillate and gets all of the flavors and aromas flowing better. Okay. So it sort of unlocks them. And, and I don't really like drinking things on the rocks. Um if, if you drink it on the rocks, then as the ice melts, it sort of naturally dilutes it. But just a couple drops, it tells, I, I've heard from so many that it just opens it up. Oh, I can smell it. That smells amazing. And this, yeah, this scotch has such a, I mean, you can. Oh. It's like floral and citrusy and. It is very bright. Yeah, it's really frontal and bright. But this cigar mm. with coffee, what's cool is you get two experiences. So when you're pairing, you get you get the experience of, of the cigar. You, you take your draw of your cigar. And you get this combination of either, you know, coffee or the cigar. And then there's this kind of imagine what it looks like when when you maybe pour some milk or something into coffee and there's mm. that swirling thing. That's kind of how I imagine the flavors in my mouth. Cause all of a sudden that coffee comes through and it really complements the cigar. This is one that, you know, this is a medium roast. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's not espresso or anything too dark or heavy. That's going to kill the flavors and it, it marries very, very well. And it's a simple, like I said, it's a it's not a fancy, you know, boutique roaster or anything. Yeah. But it's a good it's like uh it's picture it like your budget cigars. You know, like uh am I doing it? Like the house oh pinky's out. Like the picture your your favorite cigar shop and you go in and they've got the they've got their house bundle where it's unbanded, you know it's made at a good cigar factory, but it's it's not a branded cigar name and it's so this kind of like pike place roast or some caribou blends or things like that um i'm not saying go like bottom 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 of the barrel like folgers or sanka or some ridiculous crap like that international international house of wait maxwell house well maxwell house, but there's what that international there's that there's those tins what were those oh the uh, oh yeah the uh help us out 
Oh, yeah. They had the flavored coffees in yeah. those little short square tins. Yes. Guys, what, leave it in the comments. What the hell were those called? Um, Gosh, we're old. Uh, they had the, they always had the, they always had the commercial with the ladies on the front porch, yes. you know, having these like experiences or whatever. Um, uh, uh, so yes, this is the Postani Broadleaf International Delights. International Delights. Thank you very much, Chad. Um, so since I got on the wheel, I got Broadleaf and Scotch. So I am lighting up uh, the Postani Broadleaf, and this is this is a very well aged Postani Broadleaf. This is an OG. This is from the first release year ever of Postani Broadleafs, which I think was 2015. So Nescafe was also. Oh, Nescafe, yeah, was also kind of in that same but the, uh, the, the international delights were the, the ones in, in the little square in those tins tins yeah and uh um so like i was saying this has two experiences you you draw a couple times on this you take a sip of coffee and after each if it's the cigar or if it's the coffee you have this totally amazing experience that you taste the coffee first and then it and it does that little swirl. Yeah, Kevin's pissed about the orange juice. You know what? Hmm. If if we would have had the OJ here, I would have totally done it. Yeah. But I wanted to pair something and not just have a, a, a cleanser. And for me, orange juice does that a little bit more than it pairs. Um not as much as like the water I was drinking or some of the other citrus citrusy things. There is a, a flavor pairing that does happen, but it's not as strong as like a coffee or this tea that I was going to drink. We'll do it. We will get to it on the, so on the next one. This, I mean, obviously I'm going from a Nat Sherman Sterling <laughs> Connecticut shade, mild Lancero to a now five or six year old, Postani Broadleaf, this thing has not lost a step as far as the pepperiness and the that natural Broadleaf. I love Broadleaf sweetness. That's it's like, you know, rem, it reminds you of really really dark chocolate. Like those you buy those little uh, what are those little squares the uh, of chocolate Ghirardelli. Oh yeah, the Ghirardelli. The like the seventy percent, the really super dark ones. That's what this reminds you of with you know like peppery spicy kind of notes and with this with this scotch which is actually a milder scotch um but it's it's still scotch so what saying milder scotch is like you know saying mild hot sauce there's still going to be some spice to it so uh tarkov from uh, our twitch stream is asking why does my boss like to break apart his cigars and chew them that's an interesting question i don't know i don't know why he breaks them up i i um there are some cigars that i will let go out and i will just yeah if i'm if i'm doing something yeah but i've never seen anyone i do know some guys who will if they're in a place where they can't smoke they will but they are regular cigar smokers they'll have a cigar right there yeah all day and it, until they can light it up and then when they're able to light it up they will light it up in the end of it and I knew an old timer way back in the eighties who at, he was, he was a guy who would always go into the barber shop, and he always had a stogie in his mouth, you know, popping out the side there. And when he would take a puff on it and take the cigar out, you would look at the end of the cigar yeah. where, where, you know, the smoking end of the cigar and it would be like flat and have teeth marks and be like, dripping with saliva yes. and i was like okay that's that's disgusting yeah but i don't i mean hey however you enjoy when you, cigar when you buy the cigar you get to do with it what you please yep and i will not judge you on it i mean if that's how you enjoy a cigar yeah awesome and do your thing this so this scotch here so john give it to us what is something that enhances the flavor of a cigar for you and kevin i couldn't agree more dark chocolate like we're talking eighty percent or more. Really dark. Oh, that scotch with the broadleaf. Yeah. Because the scotch, even though it's milder, it has a long finish. Okay. So, 
and it's got sweetness, but it's bright sweetness. And the cigar is like darker sweetness. Ah. So they actually sort of contrast each other pretty well. It's nice. I love it. And the cool part, like, so all now, you know, I've puffed on this a few times and now I'll go back to the copy. And it's coffee and coffee is delicious. And then the cigar mm. and the marriage and the, the retro hail. So again, I was smoking the Nat Sherman Sterling Connecticut shade mild. The retro hail on that was really smooth. So I could literally let the whole draw push it out of my nose without any bite to it. But this Postani Broadleaf, because there's Lajero in there and there's a lot of things going on. I can do the retro hail and there's a lot of stuff going on there, but I can't do it as much because it's really spicy and you feel that, that singe in the nostrils. So do the, you know, the stronger the cigar, the more full body the cigar is. If you're not used to retro hailing, take your time, just a little, you know, a little bit at a time, uh, just the tip, you know, just for a second, just see how it feels. Mm -hmm. Um, a light coffee with a Connecticut cigar. That I agree with. Blonde mm -hmm. ro blonde roast um, can go really nicely with a Connecticut. Yep. Um, but honestly, espresso can also, depending on the blend, if it's like an ultra super mild um, Connecticut shade, like maybe a Monte Cristo white, I think sometimes an espresso can can push too hard. Oh, for sure. Or, in, you know, um, my, my go-to favorite... Connecticut of all time is the um <laughs> it's that one you know you know the one the Connecticut yep that's your go-to wow why is it brain fart Monday right now it is brain fart Monday I've been that way all day it's uh I'm trying to think through your it's a white label um <clears throat> The Ashton. Thank you. Yeah. The Ashton, Ashton Classic. Classic. Yeah. Um, the Ashton Classic is uh, a very mild cigar, but has so many wonderful flavors in it. And if you hit it with any, if you pair it with anything, you know, harder than a uh, light coffee or anything, it'll get lost. So for me, that one is a, a tea or a water or, you know, one of the sparkling waters I just had. One also that, um, the that Davidoff Yamasa. Oh yeah. With honestly, that's that's one of those really sort of surprising cigars. That it's a really bold blend. And that cigar, surprisingly, there it is. I was actually surprised because I've had that cigar a number of times in different Vitolas. That cigar pairs well with a lot of different things. I've had that cigars with, or I've had that cigar with some pretty, you know, pretty intense, spicy rise, mm -hmm. uh, like whistle pig. And, um, I've had it with espresso and I've had it with, um, it, Dominican coffee with, because the Dominican coffee, if you have it there in Dominican Republic, they brew it so strong. It's almost like Cuban coffee where, even though I like black coffee, that coffee was so strong, I had to have milk in it. Sure. And a Yamasa with Dominican coffee and milk is crazy good. So if you, and if you can't get your hands on Dominican coffee, um, Cuban coffee, or um, a, a Nicaraguan blend that's like really strong, brew it extra strong and like to the point where it almost seems like too much. And then uh, when you pour a cup, put in just plain milk um no skim milk please that's that's water that's lying about being milk it really is <laughs> and uh it's really it's really good it pairs pairs nicely with the yamasa so fun story i was maybe i don't know 21 or so and um i was doing an internship at this at this place and um it was a correctional facility for young guys and we had this farm um, next, next to our, uh, our place. And, um, a couple of the staff were, we were meeting with this farmer to, you know, talk about potential chores and jobs that maybe some of the guys could do at this farm. And, uh, his wife had made us some coffee and, 
And uh, he said, do you guys like milk in your coffee? And, you know, a couple of people were like, yeah, you know, like, you know, like some milk. He's like, all right, follow me. Oh, straight up cup to the teat squirt. You guys, what was her name? <laughs> I don't know, but she I'm a was horrible person. I'm delicious. such a bad person. Her Bessie. Yeah. Bessie was her name. Um, yeah. If you haven't had raw milk and I mean like straight out of the cow, raw milk, it's fantastic. You got to do it. You got to do it. That was the first time for me. And you know, I, uh, I was all about it and it was yeah. you guys, the sweetness, yeah. natural sweetness from raw milk. Do you know how much flavor you're missing? Yeah. Oh my god. When they, when they cook it in the factories, Oh, it, it loses just, it so loses, much. It loses a lot of that. Goodness. I never knew milk was that. Like yeah. what we have in the stores is not milk. It's totally different. Yeah. Yeah. But if you, I mean, if you're, if you're buying milk at the store, which my family and I, we have oh, yeah. just store-bought milk, mm -hmm. you know, factory milk in the, in the fridge. But we, since actually since our, our oldest son was born since, so, so since we first started having kids, after a few months, our it was actually our pediatrician that said, because we had skim milk in the fridge. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's like, oh, it's healthier. Well, our our pediatrician said, you need to stop drinking skim milk and put whole milk in your fridge. And then we were like, eh, are you sure. And then three or four other doctors said, yeah, you need to get the skim milk out of your fridge and start drinking whole milk. And we did. And uh, so it's close to 20 years now. That's, that's all we have. And the sad part milk. is? Um, unpasteurized milk is many times criminalized more I know. than some illegal drugs. That's true. And That's it's true. So jacked up. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. know, I get that, you know, with a product like that, there does come some risk, but as long as you know that that's the risk you're taking, I'm willing to take it every time. So yeah. Kevin, I'm going to need that number. Yeah. Um, there, there are a couple places where you can get what they call, I know nearby here, there are a couple places you can get what's called uh, low temp pasteurized, where it doesn't go as high as the factory farms do. Okay. It still approaches pasteurization temperatures, but it's it doesn't cook the, the mat out. Yeah. Because that, that top layer, that cream. And it's not homogenized either. So it's not just pasteurization, not to get into a big milk rant here. It's not just pasteurization. It's also homogenization where they use the machinery to basically make it so that they can't separate. Uh, and that was one of the best parts about when I was a kid, when we had milk from literally down the road, that it would separate. And then mm -hmm. it's like, hey, I'm going to make some ice cream. And you just make your own homemade ice cream. When's the last time? So, I mean, growing up as a kid, there's so many foods that I miss that I haven't had in a long time, like cottage cheese. Mm. We used to eat it all the time as kids. Yeah. I don't remember the last time I've had cottage cheese. We still cheese. do here. Do you really? Yeah. Good for you. Gosh. And, and for us, um, because we had people down the down the road that had uh, cows and sheep and goats, we could try different kinds of milk. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were also lucky because we had some apple trees, some peach trees, uh, cherry trees. So we could make our own ice cream with pretty much anything. And, and with strawberries. We had a lot of strawberries, too. And uh, start a commune, but let's get crazy. Homemade ice cream with fresh peaches in it <sighs> is like, forget about it. Seriously, just it, try it. If you ever get a chance, make some homemade ice cream and get some fresh peaches and cut up the fresh peaches, put Millions it in the ice cream. Peaches. It's fantastic. Peaches love me. Peaches love me. Uh, there's a copyright strike. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so I th is it? Oh, is it? I think I think so. I think yeah. I th uh, I think it's time. I think it is time. Is it? It is now time for this week's numero de los muertos. <laughs> and as always, numero de los muertos is brought to us by our friends at Smoke In.
Numero de los Muertos, brought to you by Smoke In. Garrett, what do you have for us this week? Oh, this is going to be a toughie, oh. I think. As always, viewers, leave us some comments and uh, some guesses, and let's play along. All right, so <clears throat> this is a this is a ten year. So between two thousand nine and two thousand nineteen, in North America, all right, in the United States only, fourteen people died because of this. In total or yearly average? In total. So two thousand nine to two thousand nineteen, mm-hmm. fourteen people in the United States died from this yep that is a low numbers are always tougher i think i think low numbers are always tougher it can be all right 14 people in the u.s in the last in between 2009 and 2019 died from this in the u.s in the u.s um Please let it be skipping. Is it skipping? It Please is... tell me it's skipping. It's not. Oh, <clears throat> sorry, Chad. I don't think the CDC snake bits. It is not. I think it's probably more than bites. more than fourteen. Um, is it medical? It's always a great question to ask. Um, I mean, it can be maybe or hmm, maybe not. So it's not an illness. I'll say that. Okay. It's not some obscure disease. But so I'm gonna say no. It's not. It's not medical. I think that'll give us. That'll get us on um, the wrong track. Uh, indoor or outdoor? Yes, both. Um, adults or children? Um, actually, this one is all adults. Okay. But it could literally affect anyone. Okay. That scotch goes so well with this cigar. I So, John, I wanted a little bit more time on this one, and you really just killed me. <laughs> did, Don, did John take away your fire? He took away my fun. Was that it? Was that the, is that the answer? Is it? It's water. It's intoxication. No. Oh, wa- oh <clears throat> you're talking like water poisoning. Yeah. Like, it's, it's called water intoxication. Wow. <clears throat> and, uh, I think John was uh, probably not ask or guessing water. Maybe was asking if water was involved, and so I maybe jumped the gun on giving it to him. But I'm going to give it to him anyway, since I already kind of. No, go. hey, he got it right as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Um, so water intoxication has uh, taken 14 people in that 10 year period, and most of them were involved in. Um, either a marathon or working out or doing, you know, physical activities where they drank a lot of water trying to. And so here's, here's the interesting. Yeah. Fred houses was another part of that. Um, Mm. um, uh, People preparing for marathons that were training really hard that tried to overhydrate the thing about water is it actually doesn't after your eight ounces or your um, your eight glasses of water every day that you're recommended, um, which is way too much water, by the way, it's a lot of water. in a day. Um, anything over that is no longer preventing things like heat stroke, cramping um, or hydrating your body. They say that it is just um for every hour of physical activity, a cup and a half of water. Um, Chad, Chad, uh, I was going to mention this too. So, so Chad says, I remember when Nintendo Wii came out, a lot of radio stations had hold your pee for a Wii contest. They made people drink tons of water and a girl died for it. And I think, I could be wrong, I think that was in Minnesota. Oh, really? Um, one of the stations in Minnesota did that. I think they did it at the state fair. They had, they had a... Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, I think it was in Minnesota at the state fair and I could, if somebody knows, put it in the comments, but, um, yeah, there was a girl who died because they, they kept giving them water and whoever could wait the longest before they went to the bathroom would win this Nintendo Wii. And 
a girl ended up dying because of it. Did she win though? Ooh, <laughs> too soon. Ooh, too soon. <laughs> Sorry. Um, um, so yeah, water and it, um, and the, one of the articles that I read from the Mayo clinic said that, um, after the recommended daily allowance of water that we should have, it's literally washing away your electrolytes yeah, and other things. So, well, and it puts stress on your kidneys, on your bladder, on God knows what else. And yeah, there's some systems you just can't put that much stress on. Yeah. And, you know, uh, people think that they're trying to, you know, prevent, um, you know, the, the cramping and the, the heat stroke, but at some point it goes to, oh, for flip sakes, Vegas won nothing. Oh, that's, you always want to score the first goal. You always want to score the first goal and we did not. So it's been I'm a not, good run. I'm not saying it's over, but. We'll uh, we'll see. I, I already said the fat lady saying. I mean, we're only we're only 30, 28 minutes into the game, so yeah. Good times. Who, um, who's in the goal tonight? I think Talbot is again. Uh, Kevin, if you know who's in goal for Minnesota, let us know. I think Talbot's in goal, but um, maybe it's uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, not Talbot. Dubnik. No. No, not Dubnik. Uh, what's his name? Uh, I'm thinking old school. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. Um, so I think the lesson here is don't drink water. Don't drink water. Just drink whiskey and you'll be, it's a lot safer. I think, isn't that the, the lesson where we see the, the, the right. more, you know, Oh yeah. Da, 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 da. The star. Yeah. With the star. The mm -hmm. more you know, drink just drink whiskey. It won't get water poisoning. Mm -hmm. And like G the end of GI. No, don't, don't drink too much whiskey because uh, then you get other kinds of poisoning. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I was going to say something else about. Oh, so the whole the whole recommended thing. Oh, Brodine um, is in goal. Brodine. Mm. I'd rather have Talbot. Yeah, we're done. It was a nice run. So the whole thing with drinking mm -hmm. the recommended, and I put quotes around recommended uh, oh. amount of water every day. Oh, Tied up. All right. Uh, the recommended amount of water. Eight, the, so they say eight, and they say drink eight, eight ounce glasses of water every day. If you've ever gone like on a diet program or a wellness program and tried that, I have tried that. I have too. It is not. You think, oh, it's only it's only eight glasses of water. I just try it sometime and. Get back to me on another show. Tell me how it went for you trying to drink eight glasses of water, eight, eight ounce servings of water every day for a week. It's not easy. Mm -mm. I was very surprised by uh, it would it would be like 30 minutes before bedtime. And I'm trying to choke down two more, you know, glasses of water. Um, it's not easy. you come. You honestly, I came to the point where I was I hated water because it's uh, I was in this program where I had to drink it. Um, I'm not saying water's not good for you because water is good for you. You know, just ask Ace Ventura when in the, in the second Ace Ventura movie, when he's like fighting the alligator, water's good. Oh yeah. Glub, glub. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, just, I don't know. That was, uh, that was a roundabout way of saying that was this week's numero de los muertos. It gives us eight 12 ounce beers, no problem. None. That is a true story. That is a true story. So yeah, if I if I want to drink eight eight ounce glasses of water a day, that's a lot of work. But eight beers, no problem. That is a true story. So it's probably so I'm thinking that's what that says is I have a problem mm. with water. Yep. You do. <laughs> um so Let's, since normally we do the, at this point with our guests, we would do the lightning round. Mm -hmm. um, let's just kind of give some closing thoughts about our cigars, about our pairings, about, um, and a, sort of about the future of pairing roulette. The future. The future. Oh, no, that's the dream sequence from Wayne's World. It is. 
you know, I, uh, so quick side story, uh, this weekend went up to do some work on the cabin and on the way up my nephew who is 19, I think he's 19 years old. His playlist was amazingly eclectic. Oh, nice. And I was so impressed. Just a personal playlist he put together yeah. on Spotify. Yeah, exactly. And, um, he played uh, one of the songs that it was. Um... <laughs> wow, you can't. Remember. I shouldn't just be able to tell Bra- stories like this. Brain fart. Um, part part two, part it, three. It was the song that was played in Wayne's World by Tia Carrera. Um, but oh, it was the, the original Ballroom um, Blitz. Ballroom Blitz. Yeah. Ballroom Blitz, and I was like, the original is a great song. It was so good. Yeah. And I can't remember who did the original one hit wonder. It was, um, yeah, but I was sitting there and I was like, what movie is this from? And then all of a sudden I got a flash of Mike Myers character trying to speak Cantonese to you. <laughs> and there it was Wayne's world. It was, it was a fun moment. Sisa bin Dua. You remember that from Wayne's world? <laughs> Sisa bin Dua. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll have the cream of someone, you some young guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, so the future, this is one of the things that we're excited about with pairing roulette is as the, the idea started like brewing in my head, no pun intended. The, it, I was just excited because we can honestly do anything. You can turn pairing roulette into anything. We can have, um, we can we can start with foods or chocolates or um, all different varieties of drinks. We can do brands of cigars. We can, and I've already said this, but it's just fun. It's exciting for the future. We can have more of these pairing roulettes, uh, and we can even have guests on the show where we have we send them some some cigars and and ask them to pick out some of their favorite beverages, uh, you know, to pair with us, and and we can have uh, a wheel with like. 10 different brands of cigars and we have those on hand with us ready to choose from. And, um, you know, we could even honestly do it with this here. So here's an idea with pairing roulette, sort of not necessarily the roulette thing, but let's say we go and we do another live show from Sodi's. Mm -hmm. And that night while we're there, we ask, uh, you know, Scott or, or Zach or whoever's working the counter at Sodi's just say, go in the humidor and pick us out something. Yeah. And, I love it. you know, and, and, um, uh, so the, the, the possibilities are endless, uh, and we're excited for, you know, the future of pairing roulette. Um, this Postani broadleaf with scotch, I honestly, now I want to fire another one of these up, uh, someday and try it with a different scotch, like a, a, a little bit bolder scotch, like, uh, uh, Balvini double wood or something like that. Um, two, one Minnesota. Yes. Uh, also, it's I'm not pretty over. sure we've lost half of the people who are like, the band was sweet, you know, not a one hit wonder. Yeah. Well, do you know what sweet looks like today? Ooh, not so, not so sweet. Oh, the hair on, on the the blonde, the blonde. Ooh, focus. That's not gonna. Fo- it's gonna focus on our faces. Oh gosh. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're not looking too sweet these days. I'm just saying, but. <laughs> <laughs> to your point, yes, it was it was sweet. It was sweet. Maybe not so sweet anymore. That that hair, I gotta if that's real. There's no way that's real. That's gotta be a way. Well, more power to you if that's real. <laughs> Does the car match? <laughs> what? I couldn't resist. Does the carpet match the drapes? Thanks, I guys. don't I don't care if the carpet matches the drapes. And, I don't uh, care about the carpet. My so my my parent this coffee and this cigar, you guys. If you haven't taken time, and I know a lot of people will enjoy a cigar with, you know, a beverage, no matter what it is. But take the time to really sit down and enjoy one another and see how that duet dances. It's so fun. I do. I do need that wig. I do need that wig. <laughs> You never know. Ristafari 2022. We may, I don't know. I'm just saying. Um, And I might actually 
my goal at Risk Safari 2022 is to stay upright. That was and, your and, goal, 2021. And, and awake and alive. That's my goal at Risk Safari 2022. We'll see. We'll see how that works out for me. Driving down there, I said, do you want <laughs> me to help you with dialing it back? And keep, he was like, yeah, you know, let's do it. And we had this plan in place. Yep, and we had a plan. We did have a plan. And he came up to me at one point. He was like, I'm good. I just want to let you know. I just had one more bite of the brownie and I'm good. Well, the guys were getting me like 30 minutes later, like, oh, Matt's. Yep. So we'll uh, we'll go on plan 2.0 for next year. Never again. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> and, and yeah, Kevin, Kevin's, I'm not chaperoning your ride. Kevin totally chaperoned that yep. ride back to the motel. Yep. It was fantastic. Yep. I had escorts. He did. I had escorts. I had Kevin and Garrett escorting me. But I, I was under my own power. You were. I was surprised. I was under my own power. Because getting you into the passenger seat. Um, that was an experience. I, and that's when I was like. I remember what? it. I was. It was. It was an experience. I, I went and got Kevin and I was like, I may I'll drive need you. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drive next, thank you, Kevin. Uh, yeah. So just come north and pick us up and then we'll go back down, you know. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> all right. Let's do what this do we week's, uh, this week's notable oh, yeah. smokables. And as always, notable smokables is brought to us by our friends at Ace Prime. Ace Prime cigars, notable cigars, notable passion, notable purpose so my notable this week was an oldie but a goodie um so um oh for the first time and i and i looked back through my pictures and my notes because i I, like a the nerd i am i pretty much take notes of every cigar i ever smoke and when i smoke it and all this and i'm pretty sure the last time i smoked one of these cigars before a few days ago was 2015 and that was a Drew Estate Nika Rustica. And forever, I, I had forgotten. Honestly, it, I sort of forgot about this cigar. And then Drew Estate had their uh, Freestyle Live when they unveiled the new Undercrown 10-year anniversary. Yeah. And they, they also, uh, you know, some rebranding and repackaging uh, scenarios for the Nika Rustica. Yeah, and they said that we're gonna, you know, this is a forgotten brand yeah. that we're going to give more attention to. So they, uh, Drew Estate was very generous and sent us some samples of some of the new stuff, and one one of them was the Nika Rustica, and I was like, oh my god, I haven't had one in forever. So I let it sit in the humidor for a little while, and then fired one up uh, yesterday or the day before. And and thank you to our friends at Drew Estate. Mm-hmm. Um, and it it it's funny how aroma and people say this all the time it really is true that aroma is one of the strongest sensory uh triggers of memory and it took me back to when i was at the drew estate factory on cigar safari with the people from cigar dojo back in 2015 because we had a lot of those nika rusticas while we were there uh, along with all the other drew estate stuff at the time and um, I think that's part of the reason why I hadn't smoked one in so long. And it's it's not necessarily a cigar that that lands perfectly in all the pockets of my palate, but it is a cigar that is extremely consistent. Yep. Um, it if you like a cigar that is extremely bold and puts off an insane amount plumes and plumes of heavy, heavy smoke, this is a cigar for you. Um, and you know, I smoked it, it, even though it only had, I think three days or four days rest in my humidor, I trust my humidor. So I know it was in good condition. Um, and they were shipped with Bovita packs. Um, and it, it took me back. It tasted like I remember it tasting six years ago. Yeah. So that's, that's a good thing you can say about a cigar is it tastes the same today as it did six years ago. So that consistency was consistency really means a lot it in does. this industry. It does, and uh, and that is one of the oiliest cigars. Oh my hence, gosh! Hence yeah. the all the smoke, the foot smoke on it. Like if, like you can barely see this on camera, if at yeah. all. But if this was the Nika, you'd be you like, you would see it. You would see the 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 foot smoke that rolls off of a Nika Rustica, is is visible from like space. <laughs> you can see it from space. You so, can. Um, 
it, so if you haven't had one in a while, you know, reach back out on the shelf and try one. It's they taste like they did, and so they're very consistent. And mine was also an oldie and goody goody. Um, I hadn't had one. I don't know, maybe ten or fifteen years, and it was the El Rey del Mundo that we just got, and yeah. um, they went away for a little while. I don't remember what it was like, so I can't really talk about the the you know the consistency or if this was a you know relaunch with a new blend or anything. I don't I don't even know, but it was delicious, and you know it was a staple in many humidors. You would see that El Rey de Mundo in the in the tissue paper. Yeah, I got one right here. Yeah, this was in my grab bag for tonight for the uh, for the roulette. But yeah, these uh, you've if you've been smoking cigars a while, you've seen these. You know the mm -hmm. the white tissue paper with the gold band on the outside, um, and they just um, so they just sort of re released this um, uh, under sort of their new sub brand for distribution, and uh, they're putting you know a little bit more um uh of their um uh, sort of brand dynamics behind it to re uh reintroduce it to a lot of uh maybe newer cigar smokers uh or people like like Garrett's mentioning that he hadn't had it in a while long time and I I'm in the same boat so I had one recently and I don't have a memory of right. what it was like cuz I think I don't know about you I mean, how long would you say it had been since you had one last? I want to say, honestly, probably 15 years. Yeah. And I probably about the same for me. And so I don't really remember what, you know, what it would have been like back then. Yep. But however they're making these now, it's a very good cigar. It really is. It. Uh, I don't know about yours. The burn was flawless. Draw Fantastic. was great. Fantastic. And it flavorful and just enjoyable yep. all the way through. Yep. Yep. Hundred percent. Yeah. So uh, watch, watch for the El Rey Del Mundo uh, in the shops. I, I hope they they make a comeback because it is a damn good cigar. It is definitely. So that was this week's notable smokables brought to us by Ace Prime Cigars, improving lives through fine cigars. Visit aceprime.com to learn more and now it's ace prime yeah i don't know if that's like official official but i i know that because they have a very good relationship and they they have collaborated on so many things recently there is some big news coming i yeah. think um so yep stay tuned for yeah that. stay tuned for I that think there's big news coming mm. um so one of the things that we've been working on lately is um you know Obviously, we want guests on the show because we love so much having the guests on and hearing their stories and things like that and learning about um, how they got their starts, why they enjoy cigars, family history, things like that. We love having those conversations. Um, we're getting into that season into the summer now where, um, you know, people's schedules, especially now that COVID is starting to wane and places are opening up, a lot of people who are brand owners or brand managers, brand ambassadors are getting back out on the road. So getting people scheduled is a little tougher right now. We are definitely working on that. We had some scheduled things that we had to, we had to push off. Kevin, you are a great guest. You are. You are a great guest. Um, we, we did beat COVID. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't, I don't know. I didn't like, I didn't like, you know, land any roundhouses or, you know, haymakers or anything, but we did go toe to toe with it. Yeah. Uh, well, actually sucked. COVID beat me like severely, like within I was an inch bruised and beaten and battered for many, many he was weeks. in a bad way. I was in a bad way, um, but I'm much better now. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, long story short, we, we definitely have, have guests coming on the show next week. A week from tonight is Memorial day, mm -hmm. big holiday for those of us in the States. Um, so getting anybody scheduled for Memorial day was, it's like, sorry, I can't, sorry, I can't, sorry, I can't totally understand. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the United States holiday. So we may or may not have a show. If we do have a show, we're going to have something awesome and fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe a summer theme or, you know, something like that. You know, if you guys have suggestions for show ideas, 
Yeah. Email, what do you want to see? Email us. What do you guys want to see? Send us an email. Shoot, hit us up on Facebook, Instagram. What do you guys want to see? Page us. Page, um, page us. Now, if it, it, if it involves like brass poles and midgets and donkeys, I don't think that falls in the, in, you know, the, the practices, standards and practices for, you know, YouTube and Facebook, but. Well, Kevin is free on Memorial Kevin Day. Is, Kevin is free on Memorial Day. He said he's free. Um, so, hmm. yeah, we want to, we want to have, uh, you know, we want to have a show on Memorial Day. Yeah, we do. So, you know. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. We might have a show on Memorial Day. Watch our Day. Facebook. Um, so. That is what we have coming up. We are definitely going to the PCA trade show in July. Uh, still working out all the details for getting us there, but we are definitely going to the PCA trade show. Very excited for that. So excited. Um, I'll be the, the opening day of the trade show is my big 5-0. My 50th birthday is the, the first day of the trade show. I turned 50 years old. So that's going to be surreal and weird being in Vegas at a cigar trade show on my 50th birthday. That's, in a walker? That's in a walker, be... yeah. And totally de renting de you depends out. and all that good stuff. I'm so, renting you all the things. All <laughs> the hover round, the scooter. Well, and, remember at the, the end of our uh, our show with Coop on Thursday night, the over the loudspeaker, Stephen, blah, 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 <laughs> please return your scooter to the, like, yeah. that's going to be you at the PCA. That's going to be me at the PCA, absolutely. Um, so that's it for this week, guys. As always, um, follow us on social media at HBT Cigar. Um, look for us on our website, howaboutthatcigar.com. Uh, we have great, if you've missed our TPE coverage, go back. All the videos are on howaboutthatcigar.com. So you can find them. If you want to rewatch them on YouTube or Facebook, you'll find all the links on howaboutthatcigar.com. We had some really cool interviews with some mm -hmm. people at, at TPE. So go check those out if you haven't seen them yet. Um, and if you have questions for us, if you have show ideas, anything like that, email us yeah. on how about that cigar uh, or, or send us a message on Facebook or Instagram. And until we see you guys next time, if, if you haven't seen us or heard us talk about a brand that you like, you enjoy, and you think should be featured on the show, please let us know. Excellent we, idea. We love to, especially this, you know, the small guys, yeah. you know, we love that story. And if it's a good product, you know, we, we would love to be a part of that. So, okay, now we can do the thing. Yeah. If there's, that's a great idea. If there's, if there's a new brand that, cause there are so many cigar brands, honestly, and we've learned over the last couple of years, man, there's cigar brands we never heard of. And there are some cigar brands that are new guys that are trying to get their start. Um, you know, if you want to get us introduced to them and, and uh, you know, help us build a relationship with them, we'd love to meet them, uh, have a, you know, uh, have a call with them beforehand, learn about them, um, you know, try out their products. And, you know, they could be somebody to be an awesome guest for us to have on the show. Here, or an so. accessory. Yeah. Accessory products, lighters, cutters, anything cigar related. Yeah. All that stuff. We, we just want to have people come on and tell their stories and, and, you know, learn about what they do. So. That's that's the best time for us. So, uh, again, guys, thank you for watching thank and you listening. Very much. And uh, as always, until we see you next time, burn cigars, not bridges. See you guys. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>